Hello. Uh, today, uh, I will try to cover the 2000 uh, Turkish politics in 2000s. And so I will try to cover the Justice and Development, Development Party years. As you know, I um, uh, tried to um, to cover Turkish politics from a chronological uh, order. And uh, so um, uh, last in my last video, I uh, tried to um, summarize the Özal years, the post-1980 coup period. And today uh, I will uh, try to analyze, uh, I will try to summarize actually uh, the 2000s, uh, 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 the AK Party years, the Recep Tayyip Erdogan rule, and what kind of changes uh, have uh, emerged in those years. So uh, I'm gonna make, um, uh, today I'm gonna make my presentation based on a, a PowerPoint presentation actually. So I want to uh, sh uh, share my screen at the moment. Uh, yes, I think I can do it like this, yes. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, first of all, today, yes, I'm gonna try to cover uh, AK Party rule. First of all, uh, the ideology of AK Party. As, as I said in my previous video, um, AK Party uh, came into being uh, as a result of the postmodern coup that uh, emerged in 1997 after the military intervention. Uh, you know that Erbakan uh, led coalition government, Refahiol government was forced to resign. And uh, then the national outlook movement was split and there were uh, two main uh, divisions in, the, in this uh, ideological group. One was the traditional wing, they were the Felicity Party, Fazilet parties, some other parties like this. And the other one was the modernist or the reformist uh, wing. And Recep Tayyip Erdogan was the leading uh, figure of this group. Uh, so AK Party, let's continue. Um, first of all, conservative democracy is the ideology of AK Party. Conservative democracy reflects the political and social heritage of AK Party. It can be seen as a the political trust and the embodiment of feeling in the electoral base. In terms of voter identity, an important role in the party identity belongs to the concept of conservative democracy. Conservative democracy reflects the political and social heritage of AK Party, as I said earlier. According to Yalçın Aktuan, an old advisor to Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the concept of conservative democracy has some parameters. Aktuan listed the parameters of conservative democratic identity as follows. Conservative democracy is not revolutionary. It is based on gradual understanding of change. It cares about popular sovereignty, constitutionality, and leg legal legitimacy based on universal norms. It favors a limited political power. Politics, according to conservative democracy, ideology is based on a culture of compromise. So these are the uh, um, characteristics summarized by Yalçın Akdoğan. Uh, so how did state and religion relationship was uh, uh, defined according to AK Parti? The issue of secularism was mentioned in the 2023 political vision document of the party announced in 2012. In 2023, three political vision document, the following statements about secularism were expressed under the title of fundamental rights and freedoms. Secularism means that state stands at an equal distance to all, distance to all religions and belief groups so that no citizen feels under pressure due to their beliefs. It should be understood as a principle in which its freedom is accepted as a sine qua non of democracy. Based on this principle, the Justice and Development Party regards secularism as the neutrality of the state for um, all beliefs and views in the society. Uh, so this is the secularism understanding of uh, Justice and Development Party. Uh, the Sun, as we know that Sunni Islam was um, strength during the AK Party rule. I mean, uh, uh, we know that the budget of the Yanet was expanded. And uh, of course, AK Party is another uh, right-wing political party used Diyanet as an instrument sometimes to get more uh, um, votes from the senior electorate. Um, uh, we can say that uh, the party cannot be seen as a monolithic or homogeneous party. It should rather be understood more as a coalition of different factions. AK Party presents 
a different trajectory from its predecessors. I mean, the other national outlook movement or the political Islamist parties. In contrast to Islamism, the party program and electoral basis do not call for establishing an Islamic state. Uh, so if we are to look the AKP and EU relations, what can we say? Uh, in 2014, the European Council decides to open accession negotiations with Turkey. In 2005, accession negotiations were opened. 2016, the European Parliament voted to suspend accession negotiations with Turkey over human rights and rule of law concerns. And, on, and in 2018, the US General Affairs Council states that Turkey has been moving further away from the EU ideals. Um, Another important point uh, in those years is, the, is, a, is about uh, the party's relationship with the European Union. An important development in this regard is about the changing nature of civil military relations. The requirement that the Secretary General of the Nation Security Council be a serving member of the military was abolished. So as, uh, within the framework of EU harmonization packages, there was a considerable degree of democratization in civil military relationship under a party rule. For example, the National Security Council has not any more unlimited access to all civil institutions. The National Security Council does no longer have a representative in the supervision board of cinema, video and music. Also, there is no longer any military representative in the higher education authority. So we can say that there was a really considerable degree of um, democratization uh, in terms of um, civil and military relations in the early years of AK party rule in the sorry in the AK party rule um, another important development related to the uh, nation security council within the seventh harmonization law is about the transformation of the council from an executive decision making board to one of an advisory board the regular meetings of the council was arranged bi-monthly instead of monthly meetings so these also can be seen as uh, steps towards more civil civilization uh, another important event um, that we should analyze during the AK party rule is the e memorandum. We know that it was um, it took place in April 2007. Uh, in July 2007, 84% of Turkish population voted in general elections and Justice and Development Party received uh, almost half of the votes. And the political debates before the elections focused on two issues, the election of the next president and the potential military intervention into northern Iraq. E memorandum, we know that the presidential candidate uh, was Abdullah Gül of, of the ruling AK party. And Gül has been an effective foreign minister, actually. But his wife is, wears a headscarf and uh, these uh, alarmed some secular uh, secularist circles, uh, the military and some other secularist uh, bureaucracy. Uh, uh, because Abdullah Gül used to make politics in the political Islamist party before. Um, uh, 2007 presidential elections, the parliament convened for the first round of voting to elect a president. However, uh, Gül received 357 votes with 361 deputies present. The opposition parties you know that boycotted the, uh, the first round and also some civil society organizations like Atatürk Çüdüşünce uh, Derneği led a number of demonstrations to influence this process. Their motto was this, Çankaya was is secular and should always be secular. And e memorandum in this crisis environment, uh, in the process of um, the parliamentary elections, sorry, presidential elections, the military uh, in issue, um, issued an, a virtual uh, memorandum. Um, at the time, the, the army chief of staff was uh, Yashar Buchanan. Yashar Buchanan said that I hope a president is chosen who is sincerely dedicated to the republic, the unitary uh, structure of the state and a secular and democratic state. So uh, they were always thinking that maybe the uh, AK party used to have some secret agenda in terms of state religion relationship. Actually, this was always used by the state bureaucracy in order to keep their uh, domination somehow in the political system. So this is the e memorandum. Uh, it is a, a virtual coup that happened in 2007. Um, the general chief of staff posted a statement on its website in uh, on uh, April 27, 2007. Uh, and this was seen as an, uh, as I said, as a virtual coup. Um, this memorandum uh, followed the government's nomination of Abdullah Gül for the post of president. We know this. 
And another important uh, uh, development during these years was the Alevi opening. We know that Alevi opening was uh, was part of the democratization package uh, that was introduced in 2007. Uh, for the first time, the Turkish government uh, uh, showed some systematic effort to address Alevi citizens' identity-based demands. Um, however, we can say that Alevi opening didn't produce uh, many uh, positive outcomes. There were some workshops uh, held um, between 2009 and 2010 to address Alevi citizens' problems. Uh, despite the fact that the functions, budget, and staff structure of the Directorate of Religious Affairs are strengthened by the GT Bureau, uh, it should also be stated that important steps such as the opening were taken. However, this opening was not uh, very, you know, didn't create many solutions for the Alevi people. Another very, very important development is the headscarf ban in public offices in 2013. This is also within the framework of a big democratization package in 2013. A party government lifted the headscarf ban in public offices. Actually, the headscarf ban has, a, has, a, has been one of the major problems uh, that uh, used to weaken democratic procedures and democracy and liberalism in Turkey. Uh, however, yes, almost seven years ago, this was lifted by the AK Party government. Um, um, also, another important development during those years uh, was was about the uh, closer um, uh, trial that was opened against AK Party. So, AK Party in two thousand and eight. Uh, the, uh, the Constitutional Court opened a uh, case against AK Party to close the political party. Um, let me uh, talk a little bit about it. Uh, we know that, yes, in 2008, uh, Abdurrahman Yalçınkaya, the state prosecutor, opened a case against AK Party and they wanted to uh, close party and ban, uh, ban some of the leading figures of the party from politics. And in those years, another important development that uh, I should uh, mention is uh, the coup plot, Ergenekon, Sarıkız and other uh, coup plots. Ergenekon trials were important. They took place between uh, 2008 and 2016. They were a series of high profile trials which took place in Turkey in which two 250, sorry, 75 people, including military officers, journalists, and position lawmakers, all alleged members of Ergenekon were accused of plotting against the Turkish government. Um, Ergenekon network was accused of plotting a coup against Erdogan. The highest ranking defendant was ex-military chief Ilkar Başbu. Başbu stayed behind bars for some time, we know it. Also a very important development is the failed coup attempt that took place uh, in 2016. The AK Party government survived an attempted, coup, an attempted coup which saw clashes on the streets of Istanbul and Ankara that left, um, EQ, uh, sorry, that left 256 um, people dead. It is said that FETÖ terror organization led by Gülen carried out this coup attempt. Um, July 15 coup attempt. During, during the coup attempt, 300 people were killed, thousands of people were injured, and mass arrest arrest followed the process. 40,000 people were detained. Some of them were soldiers. Some of them were judges. Where some of them were civil civil officers. Um, and uh, 50,000 education staff were also suspended, and the licenses of 2,000 uh, sorry uh, 21,000. Uh, Teachers working at private institutions were reworked uh, after the government said that they were loyal to the Gülenist network. An important, another important issue that I should talk about uh, while I'm analyzing uh, the Justice and Development Party rule is the media freedom uh, issue. According to the Reporters Without Borders, uh, they published a brand new report last year they say that Turkey ranks um, 154 out of 180 countries in press freedom index. 
According to Human Rights Watch, Turkey press freedom crisis is worsening amid growing state capture of media, the lockdown of independence of regulatory institutions, and a new social media law designed to clamp down on the remaining four spaces for free comment. I think, yes, media freedom is one of the biggest problems in Turkey today, uh, which erodes democratic politics. Uh, if we are to look at the COVID-19 crisis um, and uh, how AK Party managed this crisis, the first coronavirus case was announced in March uh, 10, on March 10. The first virus-related death occurred on March 15. Um, Fahrettin Koca uh, keeps informing the public uh, almost every day about the crisis. Uh, a good example for social welfare state policy is the establishment of FA social support groups. This is a good step. We should accept it. Uh, this group, um, FA social support group members, were on duty to distribute bread. The group was set up by the Interior Ministry to help citizens that are elderly and that who live alone and who are uh, ill or with chron who are have chronic illness. Um, in terms of economy, what can I say? I have a World Bank country overview here. I will read it. Turkey's economic and social development performance since 2000 and uh, yes, has been impressive according to World Bank, uh, leading to increased uh, employment and uh, incomes. However, uh, in the past few years, growing economic vulnerabilities are seen. Turkey's response to the influx of approximately 3.6 million Syrian refugees has been exemplary and provides a model to other countries for hosting refugees. However, World Bank also states that the macroeconomic picture today is more vulnerable and uncertain, and uh, the impact of COVID-19 crisis expected to have severely negative effects in Turkey. There is a high uh, um, rates of inflation. The um, unemployment rates are also rising. So, um, um, I can say this uh, as the uh, as the summary of today's video. As I said today, I try to cover the AK Party rule. We know that after the postmodern coup, AK Party was founded in 2001, and since 2002, AK Party has been the single has been ruling the country as a single party government uh, with the single party rule. Uh, however, um, since the failed coup attempt, and also since uh, uh, the the transition to from parliamentary system to the presidential uh, system. Uh, there are some uh, issues with democracy in Turkey, uh, the media freedom issues, the economic problems, um, rule, of law prob rule of law problem, and all uh, are, can be seen as um, threats that are uh, evident in today's Turkish politics, uh, Turkish political scene. I want to thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, in my next video, I will try to cover uh, some other um, issues. This time I will not cover Turkish politics. I'll try to cover um, some other uh, issues. Maybe I, I, I can cover some states, some country profiles and their political um, uh, profiles. Uh, thank you for listening to me.